This is Twit. Last week, we talked about the challenges that Astrobotic was having with the Peregrine Lander. Uh, it had a fuel leak uh, and, and whatnot, and it was uh, they were trying to figure out if it would survive. Uh, as of the Thursday, January 18th, RIP, because uh, Astrobotic has lost contact with Peregrine. It actually re-entered uh, the Earth's atmosphere, so it kind of did the big loop. You know, all all the way out uh, beyond. It went, it went just a little bit past uh, the orbit of the moon. The moon wasn't there, of course, um, and uh, uh, and then it came all the way back. Uh, they were actually just they're having a press conference as we were starting this uh, as well, uh, and talking about the Herculean efforts just to keep it going that long because they were able to fire some thrusters and uh, and point themselves at the sun to generate the power that that you know uh, Japan's uh, lander doesn't have, and so. So they're kind of counting it as as kind of a mixed result. You know, this was their first mission. They made it out to lunar orbit. They didn't get a chance to land, uh, but they did uh, get to go. You know, they had a a flight, like a, a good ten day flight, uh, to figure out what it's like to uh, to fly one of these missions. Uh, and it is a little bit of a disappointment. There's a lot of NASA payloads on this five at least, uh, fifteen others for commercial. Um, uh, commercial uh, payloads, including a lot of uh, human ashes and, and remains uh, for Celestis and Elysium space. Those have all uh, burned up in the Earth's atmosphere over the South Pacific. Um, but this isn't their first, uh, there's in their last lander. In fact, in just a few weeks, Intuitive Machines, another private company, is going to launch, and you can bet that they were watching this mission really closely to see like what <laughs> yeah. they need to, oh, to yeah. double check uh, when that launches on a Falcon Heavy rocket in February. And SpaceX just put the call out for media to, to the interested in covering that mission. So, so we're going to see how this this goes back and forth, and see you know if Intuitive Machines will will cross that finish line when um, uh, I believe Astrobotics' next mission is the Griffin One, which will have mm -hmm. the Viper uh, Moon Rover on it. So, what they're going to learn from that, and if and um, and hopefully we'll get off the ground. And uh, let's just remind ourselves, this is all part of NASA's CLIPS program, which stands yes. for Commercial Lunar Payload Services, uh, which is their way of helping these industries move along besides sharing data and engineering uh, understandings and so forth. It's money. Which and is a and getting a getting a, a ride to the moon at a, a, a bit of a cheaper price, too. Instead of yeah, because the Vulcan... So the average Falcon 9 launch now is, I think, between 52 and six seventy million million, roughly. Mm -hmm. And Vulcan's looking like it's going to be between... 52 to 60 uh, if it's a civilian flight. There's more for Falcon insurances 9. and stuff. Yeah, for Falcon 9. Yeah, Vulcan's going to be at least $130 million, right? Yeah. And have they addressed that in uh, any of their press conferences about, hey, here's why our rocket costs so much more? I know that ULA's thing has always been... Ours always launch perfectly, but SpaceX is kind of eating their heels on that one. Well, you know, that's a good question to ask <laughs> if we can get them on the show. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm brave enough to ask that one, but we'll see. All right. <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there. <laughs>